Super Robo Tyson Alpha 3! It's boys Zap King of the Giant Robots, and welcome back to Super Robot Wars Alpha 3. Previously, I made the very strange and unique uh, decision to take the real robot route and stay, or rather descend to Earth, not stay in space, where usually I'd go Super Robots, but that is largely in part because I want to see how the Macross stuff plays out, and, like, I don't, uh, I, uh, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, I just didn't feel any particular attachment to any of the super robots that we get on that route. So here we are on the real side, doing something different, ha having a gaff, having a lol, having a big jovial hubbub. Uh, Kira had a weird power awaken and nobody knows how to react to that. Like, was this? And, and then... And then Bright stayed behind so we could descend to Earth. But now we descended to Earth in the African desert. And we saw a cool guy. So let's go shoot a cool guy. Oh, I was waiting for it to load. I had to push a button. My bad. Kira is at last sleeping normally in his quarters, having undergone a thorough medical checkup and found nothing other than a slight fever wrong with him. Although the striker is outfitted with re-entry capability, Camille is left shaking his head in amazement that Kira can actually pull it off in battle without the benefit of prior training. Amuro did this, but he had the fucking rang manual. It's a feat worthy of the great armor. I did not read ahead, I promise. But the man himself, armor, figures that in Kira's case, it was at least partially due to his being a coordinator. Burdock agrees, that's this guy. Pointing out that the cockpit temperature re entry went far above the levels a normal could endure. And that is a feat worthy of Hino Yui. <laughs> Which, uh, the, the guide makes a repeating joke, the man, trademark, Armro, to which Hito, the man, trademark, himself repeats Armro's assessment that Kira's coordinator genes are to think. Armro could do it with skill. Eh, well, coordinator. Hito could do it because he's a goddamn genetic freak and he's not normal. Yeah, that's right, Kira's a genetic freak and he's not normal. You see, there's a 50-50 chance of you surviving upon re-entry. Anyway, the Gundam boys have all found out that while coordinators can still become ill or die from trauma like gunshot wounds, their bodies have been modified to vastly improve resistance to such things. Asuka first will brow out the difference in body specs, figuring that that makes them more like the first children. Ray counters that she's no coordinator, but Asuka feels that she... Fuck you, you might as well be... Prissy little priss. In any case, all these uh, high and mighty eugenics make it easy to see why some naturals fear the coordinator so much. Cots might almost fall into that category, but Doom points out why stop at fearing the coordinators. What about sideborgs like Guy and Hiroshi? Oh! Hots points out that they were originally human, but increasingly irate Camille then asks, What about four on the Peru sisters? Oh! At this, Kotz shuts the fuck up, as he should go back in your corner. But then this broad shows up and shoots the whole crew out shoes, excuse me, the entire crew outside if they plan to continue their argument. She insists on looking after Kira by herself and wants everyone else to leave. Asuka's not the type to take this in silence. 
she tells this woman, who of course hasn't taken up any arms herself, that she trusts Flay, doesn't think that she can get ahead in life just by being protected by others. The girl protests that that's precisely why she's trying to keep all of us rowdy people away from the injured Kira. And Ray points out that things haven't gotten any quieter. Asuka, muttering that our squad do not intend to see, do indeed seem to be intruding, hustles everyone out the door. Raylock gives that girl some origami to give a cure when he awakens, something she found in the Strike's cockpit. Oh. After everyone else is gone, she thinks that things can't go on like this. She's the one who won the bet. Kira has to go on fighting and fighting and fighting and eventually just die or she'll never be able to forgive him for not saving her father. She expects him to burn out in combat. But Kira begins to recover consciousness, learning from play that everyone else is somewhere in the Kira begins recovering, learning from that girl that everyone is somewhere in the Sahara Desert. That girl gives him the tiny folder paper animal, and Kira begins to cry in agony over not being able to protect her, the little girl that gave her the origami that was sent on a civilian shuttle. Fuck Natal, get fired. Blade pulls him in closer. That girl pulls him in closer, telling him that she's there for him and saying that her thoughts will protect him. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Misato is cursing our luck for the course change, ending up squarely in Zaf territory. Baru, for her part, is still fretting over Bright, but Misato is sure that the Infinite's Colonel will still be okay, as he knew. <sighs> Maru pulls herself together quickly, and Mu is glad to have Misato, another formidable survivor of the Balmar War, on his side. In fact, he'll have to count on her pretty quickly given that the Zafts are already moving against us. Even given how much the Archangel sends out, Mo figures that the bad guys are moving a bit too fast. Either we're dealing with a total idiot, or someone to be reckoned with. However, Mo recognizes the markings of the Desert Tiger and orders everyone to be sorted at once. However... Given the state of that girl's undress, some sexual healing has done Kira some good. And he tells her that he has to go. He won't let anybody else die. Be damned if he will! The psycho bitch tells the departed Kira to protect her and kill off every last one of the bad guys. Uh, I am officially at this juncture, replacing her name in the file. Control H. And every time her name appears in my translation file, she is regarded as Psycho Bitch. Much like Kotz, who got his name recognized, I will not recognize her name. Fuck that shit. Natarl did some fucked up shit. She's not a psycho bitch. Stage 20. Kyoshu Sabaku no Tora. Assault of the Desert Tiger. Alright, Waltfield is ready to fight it out, his objective being to gauge capabilities of Archangel and his troops by directly attacking us. Uh, 
Okay, that distraction aside. One of his men asked if that means that they are to, not to actually defeat our squad. And Walt felt hem and hum and hem. He says that they'll have to figure it out as. At, if the time comes. He points out that this is the ship that Crusade wasn't able to defeat, and it's the Federation's mightiest battalion, the Alpha Numbers, having since swelled its ranks. To make matter worse, protracted fighting will surely bring them back again. Meanwhile, Misato's marveling at the enemy's movements from Maru tells them that she recognizes Andrew Waltfield's ship, the commander of Zaf's Africa Corps, known as the Desert Tiger, for his fearsome, fearsome skill at commanding his troops. The Archangel has been damaged during re-entry, so it's pretty much immobilized. This means we'll have to go and strike down the flagship, recepts, and thereby end the battle. Seps? Or Lesseps. Okay, this is a question for Gundam Wiki. Uh, Lesseps class. Alright. Okay, so then my translation is wrong and the Wiki is right. GG. No re. Got it. Uh, as I was saying, we have to shoot down the Lesseps and thereby end the battle. B just seems peeved that the enthusiastic pilot of the strike Gundam is still that B just seems peeved that the enthusiastic pilot of the strike Gundam is still resting, but Mondo points out even coordinators are going to suffer from what Kira has been through. And Armro cuts all that shit short with a warning to everyone to watch your footing as the battle ensues. Walt Field isn't turn isn't turned in a good mood thanks to a nice batch of coffee. Now, we did get a replacement since the gun barrel is intended for space use. We were given a free Sky Grasper to which I shoveled over into this crew, not knowing that it had resupply capabilities. Neat. Yeah, still have all the other squads. Whatever. Okay. But I don't know how Catcher ended up at the front. Beach of Bitching, Mondo, Amaro, Andrew. Defeats of the Lesseps in six turns for our skill point get. That's the target. Remember, I do not need to rush them down. Alright, you don't move.
Oh, really? I do not remember those mobile suits. What the hell? Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh, come on. Already. Ah, damn. Man, I held the button. What the hell? Come on, game. Level up, shield level four. On turn two, Kira decides to join the party. Demands to know where the enemy is and telling the bridge crew to open the hatch. Charles says that shooting in the dark will only make him a self make himself a target and tells him to grasp the damn situation he's in. Read the room, Kira. And he insists that he grasps it quite well, which is why he plans a sortie. The squad are left wondering uh, what the fuck happened to the soft spoken Kira dude that was so passionate. And Asuka wonders if it had something to do with the fever he had. Maru does not like what she's hearing, but can't deny that more firepower would help, and lets him launch. Oh, But with him having launched, Waltbill orders the additional Bagus lying in wait to attack the strike so we can see its power. Bugu? That's a buku! That's mistranslated. I didn't choose that pack either. That's a regular pack. It's predictable that Kira's solar sword would dry out of fire. The Troy notes that the strike doesn't even seem to have any terrestrial OS data loaded yet. The buku's pilot says that while he doesn't know about space down here on the desert floor, the buku is king. 
Botfield likes what he sees from the strike in his pile, but figures that there's no way an anthropod mech could prevail against the Buku. Unfortunately, Waltfeld has never encountered a prodigy like Kira before, who rapidly reprogrammed the strike's controls to compensate for the sand. Apparently he was expecting a natural or something. Seed up. Yeah, I had the sword deployed last time. This is the Buster Pack. Launcher Strike. Oh, Amuro is a bit worried. Just watching Kira, who shouts out that he will not let the Archangel be lost. Psycho bitch figures that he's protecting her and her alone. The Sky Grasper.
んじゃ行くぜKind of bad. Good job, L. Hot blood and prevail. Level up. Removed. Come on! This time, eighty percent frustrating.
The Fand Elf. Ow. Ah. That's a bad start. Barriers. Nice crit, though. Get him. Damn, I wanted to hit the one up front. <sighs> uh, you! Get all And not one of my favorite YouTubers, all Dragon. Man, what are these numbers? Like, I had the advantage in accuracy and I miss. Ah. Hate that I have to spend money on repairs. That's the part that annoys me the most about losing me. Punishment for stuff that is outside my control. That's why I'm glad that he has SP Gen. Two.
くわよダメじゃないわよそんなバカな Man, give it, Kira. Come on. Bro, come on. 72% is not two misses in a row. Not make the game interesting or challenging. You're missing trivial shit. interesting and or challenging way.
have to endure the enemy turn. Pop, pop. That's a booster. Good job, Shinji. Alright, as we start to whittle away the enemy forces, we'll be on the side to sign to attack the immobile Archangel head on. He used some incredible clouds of dust he's kicking up to throw the Archangel's targeting off. And our squad have to hand it to him. As they start to struggle how to stop him, a rat has seemingly made its way into the works. Ah! Blood 
But, rat aside, yo, it's the Albion collaborating with some gorillas. The, uh, so, gorilla? What the hell is a gorilla? Garula is an enemy in Final Fantasy V. Friend of children. Yes, okay, that's what it was. Uh, the Albion is collaborating with some gor gorilla. Uh, gorilla. Why doesn't that feel right? That's right, but it doesn't feel right. Uh, climbing through the, some gorillas, the desert sunrise. They know the only thing. Excuse me. They were the only thing keeping the Zaf from ruling the desert, which is reason enough for Walt not to sortie his second wave of, of troops. Uh. Oh, well. Welcome back, crew of the Albion. Barriers, barriers, barriers. I got one of them. At this point, I will take that. Bam. Stop attacking Shinji, please. That didn't make any sense at all. Why are you leading that squad? That don't make no dang sense. At least that's efficient. Oh. Barriers. Turn four. ガンダムを見たものを生かして回想を見ていかない。33K。
I have an idea. Squad up! Bruh, really? No. No. Really defending. Camp Shinji. What? What if? What if? What? Back on this pattern. I'll still take that. Oh, 
of on man Well, you have an all, but you don't have an accuracy. Not really, no. Six, ninety-four. Okay, take it. Pass her off, thank you. This cult. Burning. Game. Burning bait. Idol. Oh, there's GPO3. Why you're not leading, I don't know. What? It's a spell? I don't recognize the spell. Wow. Next attack is going to be via crit. Does not work with Valor. Soul. All right, Kisu. Got Albion. And range. All in back here. Walk in. Oh, I'm a, I'm a. 
cooled off a little bit. Do you have an all? What can I do with it? No more than deleting one at a time. That is the safer move. Really? 35%? I wonder why your accuracy is so bad on these guys. Shield for shield level three for Kara. Okay. 
ース7の怒り忘れてなるものか邪魔だ左上部甲板に被弾損傷は定義です油断をするな第二波に備えよう Come on. Well, then what the fuck was the point of the barrier if it got broke? What happened there? I'd like an explanation, por favor. What the fuck? Come on, duo! Jesus! Wait. Level up for Amro, new type level 4, sword cut level 3. Oh, that's the that's the case of fuck your barriers. Got it.
not what I wanted. That might hit the Purus.
map? I mean, I wouldn't, but glad I finally got there. Excellent. That's gonna hurt. Even so... Alright, we made it. We lived! As they say, I lived, bitch! But what do you need? SP regen level 4? Or is that SP bonus? I forget. Find out. That's SP up. Uh, oh. Uh, maximum SP plus 6 per level. Oh, that's only 6 more. On top of whatever you got from level up. is too good. You know what? Sit on it.
まで引きつけてうりゃ今度はこっちの番だかわいいかもよし行くぜかわいいちゃんガンダムを見たもの生かして返すわけにはいかないの正義を貫く。
Money, exp, skill point, get after some losses. Once we take the, how do we say this correctly again? Ah, uh, the lessips down. Well, Phil, the other is that he is uh, not done yet. Mada mada, as it were. So as we prepare for more action, Waltville receives a flash transmission from Gibraltar. He immediately orders all his men to retreat so he can head to point zero one zero seven. And this time, serious business is at hand. Apparently, Waltfield is great at brisk retreats, as Burning is grudgingly forced to admit. But then, something very weird occurs? Two machines on which you've got no data at all appear. And then bugger right off. However, Isamu and Gould both recognize them. And Maru is busy thinking er, thanking Synapse for saving us all. He tells her to give thanks to the desert sunrise and tells her to follow him so we can erase our tracks before sundown. Pay money. Damn. Synapse explains that his crew, what his crew's been up to all this time. With the Zaft in control of Gibraltar, the Federation Brace in Africa is cut off from that of Europe, preventing a single unified action. Though Synapse has been trying to erode Zaft from the Africa side, the Desert Tigers kept things pretty soundly under control. But it is just then that a very pissed off Kigali shows up, pointing out that there are still those who resist the Zaft, and without needing mobile suits either. Maru seems uneasy that this resistance fighters know something of her ship, but fellow Gorilla Kisaka says that some of their comrades are busy following Zaft's activity. Kisaka here. Golly isn't shy about telling us that our that we're all amateurs at desert warfare. You got no shit. Meanwhile, Asuka is getting irate over Kira's attitude during the battle. Shinji's a bit more inclined to be impressed at someone their age being able to do what he did. He knows that there must be many things weighing on Kira's mind, and admires the fact that Kira isn't running from them, as he once tried to do, as we know. But Asuka points out that Kira's hardly the one, only one that can be that... I stammered. When Asuka points out Kira's hardly the only one that can be said of, Shinji says that he knows that too. Kira, it seems, recognizes Kigali, and Kigali Kira. Kigali was in Heliopolis when the guns were stolen, and he demands to know why the hell Kira is piloting that thing. He slaps him across the face, and grabs Kisaka and tries to haul him off on more Zaft hunting. Pop! After a bit, Kisaka relents and huffs off after her. Asuka's a bit too interested in the fact that Kira seemingly dodges enemy bullets at will, but has no answer for a woman's open palm. And after a moment, Kira runs off on the verge of tears. Serious? What? <sighs> Kira and Shinji both agree that Kira is still acting high, acting mighty strange, not high and mighty as I was about to read. Well, to get the Iron Angel to Alaska, we're going to have to elude the Tiger's Jaws. Burning can't leave Africa since he's rallying point for surviving Federation troops, but he's willing to loan Maru at Burning Squad instead, which is a loaded gift. But he and Masato know full well that our flight will also make a service bait for the enemy. In fact, the Tiger seems at home enough in the desert that we may have no choice but to defeat him before being able to leave at all. But... That is an interesting question why Waltville pulled out so promptly in the last battle. Word comes in from another Desert Sunrise operative. Let me get him on screen. Uh, I guess she got the word. Cool. Word comes in for another Desert Sunrise group to answer that question. A large spaceship is discovered in the mountains region, mountainous region 135 clicks away, which apparently arrived via warp. Paul? As commanders digest this incredible news, Isamu runs up and asks permission for him and Gold to head to said spot. 
yo, we know that robot. We gotta go. We gotta let us go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Go, 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 go. Gold relates that the strange mobile suits we saw briefly are from the same adversaries who struck the Mega Road Fleet. Oh. This could very well turn Earth upside down if something is not done. However, Misato reminds us that this entire area is controlled by the Zat and they've got very little information on this new development. Gould is inclined to agree, saying that it's far too big a coincidence that he and Isamu's return home would be followed so closely by that enemy's arrival. What our squad will do, instead of letting the Macross Plus people fly ahead, is go squad in full. We need every bit of information we can get at this point, even if it means risking this aft assault. Uh, we get some new items. All right, not mad at that. Actually, do I have an item page open? Ah, oh, but it's not translated. So that's not super rickety. That's for sure. Man, screw modules. Don't give me screw modules now. We're in the fucking desert. We need, like, dust proofing. Blah. That's booty. I digress. Next time. Backcross shenanigans are afoot. Secrets are to be unlocked. Good night, Space Noids. <laughs>